We're going to begin this evening with one word, crucifixion. My pastor has preached on this subject a number of times, and it always kindles my love for Roman history, and I really wanted to find out more about what the Roman crucifixion entailed. My goal tonight is to share that information with you and hopefully get you to be interested in the subject as well by learning about Rome's influence in the Mediterranean area, where the crucifix came from, and the process used in crucifying an individual. So we're going to begin with a mini history lesson to help you better understand the influence that Rome had on the Middle Eastern world. Rome is a small city in Italy that is on the Tiber River, and History.com's article Ancient Rome says that Rome began as a monarchy in 750 BC and grew about 300 years later into a republic that grew in size and power and um, controlled parts of Africa, Egypt, the Western Mediterranean, and Spain pretty quickly. And uh, by first century AD, Bible History Online states that in, in its article, The Roman Empire in the Time of Jesus, that Rome's borders went from the Atlantic Ocean to the Nile River, from the British Canal to the Black Sea, and the Arabian and African deserts. So are you wondering where the crucifix came from? Well, Holman's Illustrated Bible Dictionary for 2003 says that it probably began with the Assyrians and the Persians in their wartime when they would take the enemy's heads, decapitate them, and impale them on wooden stakes and display them about the battlefield. This turned into their form of uh, capital punishment, later on picked up by the Greeks and the Romans. By uh, both Bible Dictionary and Kristen Kilgrove in her article, This Bone is the Only Evidence for the Crucifixion in the Ancient World on Forbes.com, states that Rome crucified really only slaves and criminals and not usually Roman citizens. Over time, Rome developed this practice into a perfection. Alfred Edesheim in The Life of Times of Jesus says that they used three different types of crosses, the X, the T, and a cross. He agrees with Kilgrove in Newsweek's article on how the Romans used crucifixion, including Jesus's, as a political weapon, that there was the use of nails to attach the hands and the feet to the crossbeam and the upright, and then he says they also bound the hands. And Kilgrove states that Rome began crucifying in 3rd century BC and then continued the practice all the way to 330 AD where Constantine, Constantine finally uh, abolished the, the crucifixion and they had done it by that point for so many years that they really perfected every detail of this process. And so now let's look at that process of the crucifixion. So for those of you who might not know how the Romans executed it. Uh, it was meant to be a very long and torturous public humiliation. Uh, the Bible Dictionary, Alfred Edesheim, and Newsweek all agree on the same process. It began with a bloody scourging, and then the, the criminal who was convicted of crimes was stripped of their clothing, bound to the crossbeam, and there was a detail of four Roman soldiers and a centurion that was assigned to each crucified person and they had to see the process through from the beginning to the end. They carried the cross beam all the way on a public journey through the streets to the, up, to the upright, which is already in the crucifixion area. And the charges that the criminal was being charged with were carried along before them so that everybody knew why they were being crucified. And once they arrived at the upright, their hands were then nailed into the crossbeam. They were hoisted up onto that upright, and then feet were nailed in. The charges were then put above their head, and death was a long and slow process, usually caused by asphyxiation or arrhythmia from blood, poor blood circulation. Sometimes the Roman uh, soldiers would go ahead and pierce the side of the individual or break their legs to speed the process up because the Romans could, the Roman uh, soldiers could not leave until the person was dead. Once the person was dead, the body was usually left to the elements or birds of prey, rodents, dogs, and never usually buried. So that was the look at the Roman crucifixion and I hope that you gained a little bit more understanding in our look of the Mediterranean area.
the history of the crucifixion and where the the how the Romans executed the process. And I hope that in doing so, the v- verse in Galatians 2:20 I have been crucified in Christ might have a little bit more meaning for each and every one of us. If you could wave. Thank you.